Well, let's look at the company of the future. What does purpose mean? In the company of the future, if you go back to America's Promise and you look on the upper right and upper left and it's come together, the purpose is to create the greatest total value for everyone we touch. That means we have to figure out a way as leaders to get out of our trade-off mentality. We'll only pollute this much because we can make this much money. We'll only gouge this much. We'll only just absolutely put this much pressure on the supplier to move their production offshore because that's all we can do today. Instead, our goal is to create the greatest total value for every one we touch. What does that take? It takes very sophisticated thinking. It takes the ability to think in yin-yang ways all the time, to think in terms of paradox, legitimate competing, prior competing priorities, and to come up with new alternatives that are better for everyone. The second is the business of the future is about people. It's all about tribal culture. The young people of today are all about tribes. My daughter tells me there's tribes named Emos. You familiar with that? What, what are the other tribes? Seensters. Yeah. You go on the internet, you go to places like myplace.com or the places where all these tribes gather, right? They all have labels. Why is that? Because there is a lack of love glue in our society that traditional institutions used to provide in terms of churches, communities, and families. So the younger generation finds people of similar interest and values, often using the internet, and brings them together in tribes of a common interest and a common worldview. The business of our future will be grown up versions of the same thing. The way things happen in a big business as I've learned over the last 25 years, are small groups of people working together for change. Usually six, seven, eight people, task forces. That's how change happens. The happiest people in an organization work in clans. Clans are about 40 people. They work together to accomplish a greater good. You know why people like working in clans? Because clans are families. And you know what families do? In a family, a good family, you're in the know and have a voice. All decisions are discussed. The sense of community and the sense of consensus isn't something artificially gotten. It's something that's a natural outgrowth of those people working and acting together and wanting to share what's going on and wanting to tell each other what's going on. It's a sense of inclusion and absence of cliques. And then as you go up, as clans form tribes, tribes are about 160 people. They become a business unit, a P&L center. After 160 people, People no longer relate to another human being as a human being. They're only statistics. There's plenty of research to say that we can only, even the best of us can only remember the names and associate with faces of about 150 people. And as soon as, the, as your work unit gets bigger than that, it becomes an object to be manipulated. And what about profit? Profit is the result of innovation, not exploitation. If you look at large companies today and you look how they make profit, most of the time it is focused on some form of exploitation of power. An imbalance in the market where they absolutely grab market dominance and are able to keep out other competitors. The ability to exploit labor, whether it's illegal immigrant labor, where, whether it's just people who need a job labor. We live in a global marketplace that overnight through educated people into a global workforce from Eastern Europe, China, and India that's added billions of people potentially to the workforce who can do work with their minds. Do you know that paralegal work has been done in India? Paralegal work. I'm not talking about computer programming. Anything you can do with your mind can be done offshore somewhere else. People didn't think they could do creative work. They started designing more elaborate websites in India about three years ago. They make movies in India. The movie industry in India is about as big as the movie industry is here domestically. The idea that, with, that people over there aren't innovative, creative, at a much lower cost, is absolutely absurd. This is a new world. The only way that we can be prosperous in a new world is to be innovative, to be creative, to outthink. It's the only way. And if our business model is based on exploitation of power, whether you're Microsoft or Walmart, your days are numbered. Steve Ballmer was interviewed. I could not believe this. He was interviewed recently about one of the strengths of, of uh, Microsoft, and he said innovation. And the interviewer was like dumbstruck. Really? 
<laughs> well, what have you done that would, you'd say is the first in the field? He said, windows. Windows? Windows is like the worst knockoff of Apple Macintosh's interface, which was, a, which was an outgrowth of the work done at Xerox Park. You're claiming Windows is an innovation? It's just a virus attraction. <laughs> How can you have a company with the smartest people, by their own admission, in the world working in a company with the resource of Microsoft and not innovate anything significant? What is going on? When the pollution starts at the top, everybody downstream gets sick. I'm not saying these are bad people. I'm not saying they're immoral people. I'm saying they've created a monster, which is their own business. And the monster lives by exploiting. Those are just two examples. If we go on to the big industrial companies, the most punished company in the history of America, or at least modern history of America, for violating a host of federal laws, some criminal, is General Electric under Jack Welch. 